Shadowverses. Greetings, I'm Shadow, and in this episode of Fantasy Rearmed, we're going to be exploring how to fight White Walkers and their Whites from the TV series Game of Thrones. So to start us off, we really do need to understand the specific physical properties of White Walkers and Whites, and these two things are quite different in Game of Thrones. A White Walker is a humanoid supernatural monster created through a dark magical ritual, where a White is any dead corpse that has been reanimated by a White Walker. We'll first look at the Whites. Now, even though a White can be any reanimated dead corpse, including animals and dragons, I'm going to focus on the more common type of Whites you're going to find, which are the reanimated corpses of humans. Whites are actually a little different to your cliché classic zombie. Don't get me wrong, they're similar in the sense that they're reanimated walking undead, but zombies have some more classic or common characteristics that aren't exactly conveyed on regular whites from Game of Thrones. For instance, zombies are able to make other zombies through biting, and they are hunger for human flesh ravenously. Whites don't really care about that at all. Zombies are very unintelligent, and they don't usually use weapons. And regarding armor, they only wear the clothes that they wore when they were alive. They're not smart enough to think I'm going to change clothes and wear armor, unless they're like a unique type of zombie, I'm just referring to the more common type. And because of those two things, the primary weapon they use, their mouths biting, and the armor they wear, that affects the way you would want to fight them in a big way. I've made a whole video exploring the types of ways you would want to fight zombies, but those tactics that I talk about in that video don't necessarily apply to whites from Game of Thrones. Now, Whites do have a frenzied type of bloodlust, but they are controlled by the White Walkers, and the White Walkers are intelligent. They could command the Whites to employ more organized tactics or even use specific weapons. And of course, the Whites always are using weapons. That's their primary way of attacking. They don't generally bite and try and rip people apart and eat them. Although when they don't have weapons, that is something that they resort to. The best way to kill whites in Game of Thrones is with fire, dismembering them, hacking them up. And there are two more kind of unconventional ways that actually apply to specific weaknesses that whites have. The first one is a interesting kind of difference to the original books. Whites are vulnerable to a same vulnerability that apply to white walkers in the TV series, and that is to dragon glass or obsidian. This isn't necessarily a weakness in the book series, but that is actually a little bit in debate because the scene where one of the characters, Sam, tries to kill a regular white with an obsidian dagger, it doesn't work, but the specific wording of that actual engagement explains that it didn't work because he was hitting the white's armor. The obsidian didn't penetrate the armor, so whites actually might be affected by obsidian in the book series. We actually haven't discovered that yet, but in the TV series, a white is stabbed with an obsidian dagger and dies as a result, and it seems that merely touching the flesh of a white with dragon glass or obsidian is enough to kill them. You don't need to dismember them with with an obsidian weapon or stab them in a specific part of their body. The other unconventional way of killing a white is killing the white walker that rose them from the dead. White walkers have the ability to reanimate the dead corpses and if you kill that specific one that did it, all the whites raised by that white walker will also die. Okay now, so with their physical abilities understood, what would be the best ways to fight them with classic historical medieval weapons and tactics? As with all my analysis in my Fantasy Rearm series, it's a nuanced question because there are different ways we can approach it. Employing fortifications and castles would be tremendously effective, but the difference between whites and regular zombies is that whites can be commanded by a more intelligent overlord. And in my mind, I think that means they'd be capable of employing certain anti-castle tactics, siege tactics. Ladders for ladder rushes, siege towers, battering rams... And the great danger about these whites is their insane frenzied bloodlust, okay? They do not fear death, They and that's one of the main like difficulties in trying to launch an assault against a castle. A lot of people are going to die while you're attempting it, and a lot of your attacks might be rebuffed and your own men will retreat. Regular people don't like to die, and their battle lines will often break, and they'll just run, okay? This is this happened through all throughout history. It was very rare, though it did happen admittedly, but still, it was more rare in those circumstances for people to just continue fighting until the last man. 
But if you have an army that will never break because of this insane bloodlust, they're just monsters, you can send wave after wave against any line of defense, including castles, and regardless of how many of your units, your monsters in this case, are dying in the first attempts, if you have greater numbers, you will overwhelm those defensive walls. The other danger that whites have as being undead creatures is that to properly kill them, you need to dismember them, okay? Piercing attacks won't do spit against undead creatures in this sense, and so regular arrow fire won't bother them at all, and that's the main type of attack that you can employ from behind defensive castle embattlements. Of course, the perfect answer to this is to employ obsidian tipped arrows. If you've got that, a castle is your absolute best option, and then all these waves of whites running at you, if you just have enough arrows, you can wipe them out, because you know, these defenses, castles are made to enable a smaller force to take out a larger force, and if you have even more men manning the battlements of a castle, it's so difficult for any attacking force to get up on those walls that you could very easily wipe out an army. But what if you ran out of these obsidian tipped arrows? You can't use normal tipped arrows, and even if you don't have this dragon glass in the first place, well, I don't see a way you could rebuff these whites effectively from behind castle walls, because arrows are your best option, and if your arrows are useless, well then you're just going to be trying to fight them while they're got their ladders and everything, or even just climbing and crawling up on top of each other like World War Z style, which we do kind of see whites are capable of. They did overrun a wooden palisade by just rushing at it, and so if they have the numbers, I think they'll just pile on top of each other and get atop the walls, and then the defenders are just left there fighting them right up on the battlements while they're trying to climb over. And if the whites have numbers on their side, I don't see how a castle is going to enable you to rebuff this attack. You're going to be overrun. Regular zombies are not intelligent enough to employ siege tactics against a castle, but whites, they're a little bit different. So if you don't have obsidian tipped arrows, I actually feel locking yourself into a castle is a bad defensive move. You have no other choice, okay, castle is still a castle, it's good, and if you have numbers on your side and there's less whites, yeah, okay, you would be able to repel them from the castle walls, but if you don't have the numbers and the whites have time on their side, you've locked yourself into a place with no retreat, because your men are going to retreat. They're still men, okay, and once they lose, like, 10% casualties, that's the general number. It, of course, varies a lot, but as soon as you start to lose a certain amount of men, well, your, your own guys are going to retreat, they're going to break ranks and flee, and the danger about whites is anyone they kill is an instant addition to their own numbers because they'll have a white walker controlling them and a white walker can raise any killed person instantly right after death it doesn't seem like the whites need to eat okay and they don't rot away in actual fact we see whites almost emaciated to just skin and bones and they're still capable of running and fighting very effectively it doesn't seem like the whites will die from hunger or time or will just just rot away. And so time is on their side, and if you're locked in a castle, you don't have a place to retreat, you're kind of dead. This makes, in my opinion, castles not the perfect tactical option. You do not want to lose any men to the whites at all, which means you need the option to fight in a very defensive, protective way, which means room to withdraw and retreat. If you don't have that option and you start to lose, the enemy instantly starts to get more numbers on their side and you'll be overrun. So retreating is a very good option, which means taking the battle onto a more open field. Once you're on an open field, you can start to employ more inventive tactics and exploit some of the whites weaknesses. What are some of their weaknesses? Well, their very aggression that seems like a strength is also a weakness. I have not seen the Whites retreat. We have seen them come to a stop when Jon Snow was retreating across water. Not that Whites are afraid of water, it just seems like wading through the water they wouldn't be able to catch up. And this is another important thing that you can employ against the Whites, and that is outrunning them. We'll come back to that point, that's important. But the fact that they are also very aggressive means you can lure them into to terrain and circumstances that benefit yourself. If you can set up traps on a battlefield with sharpened stakes or even like oil where you can set them alight because burning whites to a crisp is a way to kill them as well. Well, these are all very effective tactics that you can employ, though I feel like you might only get away with them once because again, they're controlled by intelligent white walkers. And so if the white walkers realize that they're getting lured into these big traps where you're able to either lure them into a forest and set the forest alight 
alight or ground that has been soaked in oil and you set that alight and of course there is dragon fire as well. I think the white walkers would learn from this and adapt their tactics. Still good things to try and employ and if the white walkers learn from this and then command their whites to act differently you're gonna have to change your tactics as a result. Yet there is one thing that you always have as an advantage over the whites and that is that the whites don't seem to be mounted. Of course, white walkers are on undead horses, but for most of their army, they are on foot. This means, in my mind, one of the most important battlefield tactics that you would want to employ in fighting whites is with cavalry. Cavalry gives you a lot of advantages. If you can just outrun your enemy, you can keep yourself at a safe distance and engage when you want to. Hit and run tactics, shock warfare, keeping yourself at a distance. The specific type of weapons you would want to use when mounted would be really heavy cut centric swords. When you're up mounted you generally can only use a one handed weapon. You can sometimes get away with a two handed weapon but it's more difficult. One handed weapons are far more common for mounted soldiers. Piercing strikes do very little if you're using regular steel weapons. So you'd want heavy slashes that you can dismember them with. So we would then be looking at very cut centric focused swords. The issue is sometimes whites are wearing armor if they were a soldier when killed. Not every white does. Just means you're gonna have to aim for their head in the open areas but if a white isn't wearing armor well then you can just hit them in the chest and try and chop them in two. And for something like that you need a heavy hitting sword. So this could be any type of arming sword with a broader blade or a blade that is more focused and kind of emphasized for the cut. So I'll be looking at like the falchion and messer. One of the difficulties you'll run into in this kind of drawn out defensive warfare is in fatigue. You will get tired and your horses will get tired so you'll have to retreat to a fairly far distance to try and recover your energy before the whites close the distance and you'd have to engage again. If the whites are just never stopping and they're constantly advancing you would have to employ certain terrain breaks to give yourself breathing rooms. For instance uh, getting to a river, being out across a river and holding a bridge, bottleneck points and stuff like that. Moving through forests or anything like that, anything that you can pass through quickly that would take the whites longer to move through would give you breathing room, time to recover and continue this slower drawn out defensive warfare. Of course if you can arm your cavalry units with obsidian type weapons, blades as well, of course you'd be able to take out a larger number of whites very quickly. The difficulty you'd run into is if a certain number of whites are wearing armor. Obsidian is horrible against armor. It's very fragile. It'll just snap. You hit something with an obsidian blade against steel or metal, it's just going to break. And I'll also say again, of course, obsidian tipped arrows would especially be useful in any type of battle scenario, not just behind castle walls. The problem with using archers on the open battlefield is that it is much harder for them to retreat if the enemy closes the distance and so if you are going to employ archer units and they are not behind fortified defenses you're going to need to put something between the archers who have these obsidian tipped arrows which would be like gold for you so valuable and so useful you would need to protect those archers so this would be a line of infantry with massive shields cavalry on the sides to flank a row of pikemen behind the shield wall to stab and if those pikes can be obsidian tipped as well even better and then a row of stakes on top of that and then the archers just shoot volley after volley. This would be the kind of deployment structure if you were using archer units on an open battlefield in my opinion. If the whites have greater numbers and with their insane aggression, I actually don't really see a shield wall holding them at bay for too long. You would really have to rely on your archer units to just shoot volley after volley. And if you can kill the whites at uh, fast enough while they're trying to get past the shield wall, you might have a chance. But if the archers can't keep up with the numbers of whites assaulting them, the whites will overrun. And then if as soon as the whites start killing your own men, or they're just adding numbers to their ranks and you're going to be overrun and the only people who'll be able to retreat properly will be the cavalry. Once again why cavalry in my opinion are the best tactics to be employed against these creatures. It would be a particularly tough battle especially because the whites use weapons and that means your armor isn't going to be as effective as it was against regular zombies. A zombie just trying to bite through steel or even thick gambeson it's not going to do a thing. The only thing the zombies could do is then have greater numbers and try and rip the you know opponent limb from limb. Armor's not really going to help you too much 
much in that regard. Though it's much harder to rip a limb off that's uh, protected through mail because the mail on the arm would have to be ripped free as well and that adds a lot of strength altogether. But anyway, whites are aggressive and they do seem intelligent enough to aim for the open areas because they just want to kill. Kill, kill, kill. And so armor in this instance isn't as hugely beneficial as they were against regular zombies. And so these are my thoughts in fighting against a white army generally. There'd be specific things that could mix things up, especially if the white walkers controlling them learn and command their whites to employ different tactics. Very, very difficult, but not impossible. What about the White Walkers themselves? You see, the White Walkers are not in huge numbers. And in reality, the very best tactic in fighting against the Whites would be to take out the White Walkers, okay? I've been speaking so much about just fighting the Whites one-on-one. -on -one. As I mentioned, so difficult. The best tactic is to take out the White Walkers, because if you take out him, you also take out all the Whites that White Walker has risen up. The problem is, they are generally protected by all the whites, all the undead surrounding them. Yet still, the white walkers have some pretty significant weaknesses, though also strengths. They are far stronger than a regular human. They can just pick up a regular guy and throw him with one arm. Their ice-like weapons causes steel to shatter, steel weapons at least. And if that's the case, I don't see how steel armor is going to protect you too well against them. Yet, with the mere touch of obsidian or valyrian steel, as we have seen in the TV series, that will destroy a white walker instantly. You don't have as huge a problem in regards to running out of obsidian obsidian in trying to take out the white walkers because they're so few in number. Using obsidian tipped arrows against thousands and thousands of whites, well you might run out of ammo, but if you're just trying to take out the white walkers, much fewer targets and you probably won't run out of ammunition in that regard. And this is probably the best tactic because the white walkers seem to be fairly arrogant. They will move up on their horses overlooking the battlefield and looking at them. And so if you could just sniper them from a distance with an obsidian tipped arrow, Kill them instantly, game over. If there are some chances with one a long-range archer, what about a number of long-range archers? 10, 20, 50. If you could have these archers hidden somewhere on the battlefield, anywhere, and as soon as a white walker appear, just shoot everyone. Shoot a volley aiming for this one white walker straight away. 50 obsidian-tipped arrows have a much higher chance of hitting this white walker than just one. So you'd be employing stealth and long-range archery. The best long-range bows for this is, of course, the heavy war bow or long bow. Seriously, Jon Snow, he should be just going through his whole army and saying, Oi, are you good with a bow? Are you good with a bow? And making dedicated skirmish archer units on horseback so they can retreat if they ever get caught out, okay? Because on horseback, you can always outrun the whites trying to protect the white walkers. And also being on horseback, they have greater speed and maneuverability to try and flank the white walker army army, get to the White Walkers and just launch these arrows at them from a distance. They possess fatal weaknesses and you would just be the biggest idiot to not exploit it. And if that's the case, if you're relying on killing the White Walkers to defeat the White Army, I would try and lure the regular undead soldiers away from the White Walkers with feints, okay, retreats. You would want to use cavalry, you would want to employ terrain, and you would not want to engage, okay? You would just try and lure them, bait them, get close, pull back because as soon as you engage these whites, especially if you have infantry and they can't retreat, every man you lose is just going to join their ranks. And so with all those tactics I was talking about and fighting the whites, I would actually want to try and avoid that in nearly every instance. Lure them out, bait them, cause things to get drawn out to send these elite skirmisher archer units with obsidian tipped arrows to take out those white walkers. You absolutely need to do that. And if you can do that, you have much higher higher chances of defeating this White Walker army. And there we go, these are my conclusions. If you have to fight the Whites, okay, and you couldn't take out the White Walkers, cavalry is your best chance and defensive warfare. And against the White Walkers, elite cavalry archer units, and yes, you can shoot a longbow from the back of a horse, it's more difficult, but it can be done. In fact, my clothes has even shown you can shoot a longbow from the back of a horse. It is more difficult, having such a large bow on the back of a horse, it's more awkward, but you need that speed and maneuverability and then you can just get the horse to stay still while you launch your main volley against the White Walker once you're in position. So what do you guys think? What are some other tactics and weapons that you would want to fight against White Walkers and their Whites? Please share them in the description below. I look forward to reading them. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed and of course I hope to see you next time. So until then, thank you.